on September the 9th, 2015, the City Council transferred a large list of properties from its empty buildings inventory to the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency, citing these buildings had a negative impact on our neighborhoods and were in need of rehabilitation. Speaking, Jay decided to fact check the city's list and have concluded that most of these properties have never been empty at all. Some are new construction, another has been rehabbed over time by their owners. None of what we saw seemed to be problem homes. Some of these homes are in the city's most recently refurbished neighborhoods. How these properties ever made it to the bad list makes one wonder as to the motive of transferring them to the JCRA. It should be noted also that the Jersey City Fire Department has clearly identified all empty homes over the past several years with a large X sign to alert firefighters there is no one within. The voices you hear in this video defending this action are Council President Rolando Lavero and Corporation Council Jeremy Farrell. To initiate this process and be a little more aggressive where it wasn't being done before in the past. I can't emphasize that it was never being done in the past, and so the city is finally taking some actions around this. Um, and, and homeowners, or property owners, I should say, who own these dilapidated properties, um, in many cases, because they know that we're inspecting and investigating and fining and so forth, we're they're under pressure to say, you can't just continue to hold on to this property. You, know, you need to do something with it, either develop it um, or, uh, or sell it yourself. Um, otherwise, if, if, the, if the current owner refuses to approve the property, then action is taken to ensure that we can approve the property. I know everyone wants to dilute this down and make it seem like something it's not, but they're not serving anyone's interest. This is a very good thing that is being done to enable the improvement of our city. If the current homeowner wants to do something productive and give them that property, then great, that's what they should do. But if the current homeowner persists in allowing the property to be blighted, to detract from the property values of the other residents, to be dangerous, then this is an effective tool to improve the community. I, I just have to say, because there's a lot of things thrown out there about corruption and, and whatnot, Th that, that could be, again, farthest thing from the truth. Um, this is nothing remotely, remotely related to anything doing with corruption. Um, we, we made certain promises around this that we were going to um, try to do our best to revitalize our neighborhoods and communities that have been long been neglected. You may not agree with our with our methods and how we go about doing things or with the process maybe and we can reasonable people can, can disagree about that and we can talk about process and how we improve that um, but I resent I literally resent the idea that uh, that somehow um, we're, we're doing this um, under the guise of corruption in some way speaking Jay things this is similar to awarding 20 men in redevelopment loans to Bruce Ratner the developer of the Pet Boys Project. On January 9th, 2012, the New York Times wrote an article called A Developer Between Legal Clouds. Developer Bruce Ratner, who's in project after project, deploys lobbyists and politicians to change zoning ordinances and chase down rich packets of subsidies. He was identified as Developer 1 in Brooklyn and developer too in certain cases. My name is Esther Wigner and uh, I just would like for the record uh, to state my thoughts about this. Um, I think your name is Mr. Wenger and I can correct. You mentioned that all the properties are properties that are in need of redevelopment. So one of the things that that does for me is makes me question how that's defined, because if I'm not mistaken, this council just recently voted on a resolution to designate 280 Grove Street, which is this building, the property behind it, and the property across the street, as an area in the new development. So, you know, this doesn't necessarily look uninhabitable to me, so I question 
the, you know, the definition or what guidelines you're using in terms of an area in the development. 